Welcome about betters. I had a busy work week, so I was unable to make a pick video despite doing research, study, and mocking up some templates. But this was a good thing because I had another horrible week. I'm not a capper and maybe I'm a poor gambler, but I certainly don't fabricate my data or results. I understand these channels out there do their best to confidence you into what believing what they're telling you is the truth but the reality is none of them are perfect none of them win every week they all take losses and they all take lists hits and some of them will, will put that data out there for you you can see it publicly so uh, me doing this is not uncommon it's just interesting that you provide people with something uh, that is an insight into what you're really doing that's the truth whether it's a bad thing or not or your results are poor I'm not trying to present myself as a capper or as somebody that you should follow for gambling advice, I do this for entertainment purposes only. Um, shout out to uh, my boy Chris Cross of the MMA community uh, who understands that um, some of this stuff like creating this content actually can make you create your own biases in your own fight, uh, fights. So um, I've learned that and I thank Chris Cross from the MMA community for pointing this pitfall out. So it's, I'm in a hard spot because I see a benefit to con content creation and I enjoy it. It helps me collect some of my uh, thoughts a little bit better as well as the data that I get to look at and I get to organize it. And at the end, I see exactly how I'm losing, uh, which, is, which is quite funny in, in this instance. Uh, what a great event last night, despite losing uh, and being on the losing side of most of my bets. It was all a wash in the end. Here I was stressed out that I lost a lot of money. You come home, you keep your tickets, you do your research on them, uh, and you, you'll be surprised at what you find out. And what I found out this weekend was that Impa Kasangane is for real. Um, my biggest error, first mistake, was underestimating Impa. I really thought he was damaged goods. Uh, Politnikov looked so good in his last uh, bout uh, against Kutelare. Uh, I was so impressed by him that I thought that Impa would come out timid. Uh, would be um, shattered by the Buckley uh, KO, and it was nothing of the sort. Um, I thought Polinikov, you know, looked long and lean. He had a great chin. He got cracked. He got cracked by Kasangane. Um, he wasn't finished on the feet. Uh, he was hurt and he was stunned, but he wasn't finished on the feet. I realized that my ticket was mush when Impa caught that foot. When he caught that kick, and he threw uh, Polotnikov off to the to the mat. I knew at that moment I had lost. And I was very impressed with Impa at that moment because to have somebody kick him to do the same thing and not be afraid to be punished for it and, and uh, having one of the most brutal kicks done to him, it was an incredible mental battle that he had won. And I underestimated him. And for me, he was the fighter of the night. For me, he deserved the submission of the night. And, and Dana, wherever you're at, please give this guy some money. And Impa, if I see you again, man, uh, or see you, I'm sorry, my hats off to you I, I i apologize that i doubted you 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 really impressed me my money's on your side my heart's on your side uh, my my uh mind's on that side too because uh you you fought very impressively and uh, i think you should have gotten gotten a bonus if you you hadn't another fight that maybe or someone that should have deserved a bonus was uh this guy young oh my goodness he kicked my butt in a small little bets that I sprinkled, but then I looked at him, I'm like, holy cow, I had put a lot of money in the night here. Uh, why? Is because I thought Knight was going to be the better wrestler because Jung had no wrestling to this point. He had no takedowns, and I believe he set a record uh, on his takedowns of Knight this, this e uh, morning. <laughs> I was about to say this evening. I really thought that uh, Knight could possibly catch him. I ended up throwing some props here uh, with Knight finishing and the under, and I was wrong, 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 wrong. So, um... You know, Young was more seasoned. Uh, I thought they would talk about the wrestling, the takedown accuracy. Uh, Young was hittable, but boy, did he just dominate at night on the ground. Here's here's another fight that I did get correct, but I uh, put in wrong places with the wrong amounts, although I did get cashed on Gamrot. Uh, I wasn't as impressed with Gamrot this time out. Um, he didn't move the same way that I expected him to. Um, I really, really was hoping that... Um, he uh, would would finish possibly Holtzman sooner. Um, I did get paid on both of them, but yet he, he looked sloppy. And Holtzman was brawling, and I think Gamera benefited benefited from Holtzman having that brawling style, uh, not just clean but clean style. So um, I still 
Cash Gamrot. I wish I would have placed them in some better parlays. Uh, I just didn't do that properly. I did actually place him with uh, Selecki here. Um, I really thought Selecki would come out. Not necessarily did he disappoint me. I thought he was had a bit more of an advantage on the feet that he didn't utilize because he was dominating on the ground. He wasn't able to secure any submission, but still an impressive bout because he, uh, Jim Miller is, is not only a hero to Selecki. He's a hero to a lot of people. He is uh, one of the greatest UFC fighters ever. He's a UFC Hall of Famer. I mean, is his guard effective? You, you know, I yeah, I asked about that earlier, and it obviously wasn't anymore. And Selecki just was able to control him. I believe that Selecki was just a younger, stronger version of um, Miller, and so I I went hard on Selecki. But at this part time of the the uh, eve or evening and morning, I was already down a bit because I put Palatnikov in a bunch of parlays and spread myself a little thick there. Uh, financially and I'd already committed most of my cash had done something that I, I try to do to curb my my wagering is not take a lot of cash into the casino with me which usually works because I don't go to the ATM in a casino uh, so it put me in a weird spot where I financially wise capital wise going forth in the bout but I, it was fine because I, I have to commit to a certain amount of units each time I go in I, I try not to go over what my budget is so here's another uh, bout that I cashed in on, and Marquez did impress me, even though he seems a little odd of a person. I like Sam Alvey, but man, he finally got finished. Marquez, uh, Alvey was doing what he always does, countering, countering, countering. Such a good counter puncher. The way he moves on the outside and then, and then strikes with his one-two coming in, Mar he was tagging Marquez, and Marquez felt it. He almost had Marquez out himself. Uh, I would have been happy because Alvey always fights for your money. Another guy... You know, if there's money for winners, maybe once sometimes they should give money to these guys that, that lose. Like Perry lost and, and just still took it, you know. Like, it, it, it seems stupid of a, a thought, you might think. But, man, he, he fights for your money. And, and, and Perry, the next, in the next bout, fought, fought for his money, too. You know what I mean? We have to have respect for these people that go in there for our entertainment and for uh, not our, our benefit, too, if you're, if you're wagering. But, man, what a fight. Rodriguez just... Pieced Perry up, and I, and I I knew this was going to occur. So at this point in my morning, I'm about even, and uh, what I start to do is get aggressive, which isn't uh, the best thing to do, especially in about like uh, Alan Arnold, Alan, sorry, Arnold Allen, and Yusef. I was really uh, strong on Yusef, just because I I felt his striking. Um, accuracy as well as his volume might overwhelm Allen and I knew that Allen would get takedowns but man I was surprised how well Allen did on the feet he stunned Yusef tw twice uh, giving him the chicken legs the stanky legs uh, Yusef was wobbling out there running around like a chicken with his head off and uh, Allen really stayed composed did what he had to do um, really boxing quite orthodoxly I mean quite normally I mean even though he's a left-hander I'm sorry but just normal types of strikes that still were effective that got Yusuf off his game and, and the takedowns and the transitions on Allen's part were fantastic really he's going to move on to better competition Yusuf isn't gone though um, that was a fantastic bout I was on the losing side of it but still fought for my money but a little too much money on Yusuf he was uh, still critical in a lot of my bets so unfortunately by this point I thought I was in the uh, red and uh, had to do something desperate so I went against all my logic all my data everything told me no 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 but when I saw the money uh, in terms of what I could make on Holland picking a bet even though I was pretty much near even at this point um, I decided to get a little greedy and go against myself and uh, go with my friends because I'd been losing most of my night and uh, said, hey, I'm going to go against what I believe, what I think, etc., etc. And they're like, fine, you've, you've been wrong thinking what you've been doing at this point. And another thing about, about that in terms of criticism and people of uh, uh, not just on the internet and in person, I, I take these things in jest. I mean, I, I literally meet people in the casino and they're like, hey, let me talk, give me your bet so I could go with the opposite of you. And I don't get angry at those people. I don't, I don't lose my cool. I don't think of them as horrible people. I laugh at them and I tell them that or I'll tell them one other thing or I'll lie or I'll tell them just anything. But I, my apologies, a uh, slight rant there. Um, so what I did is I took Holland 
uh, to win here. It was just too good of odds to pass up. Uh, I looked at what the payout was. I got a little greedy. Holland did really well despite not being able to take a takedown. He cracked Vittori a few times and was quite exciting, except that he didn't learn during the bout, nor between the last few weeks, of course, which isn't going to happen, how to stuff a takedown or, or at least move or get in a position, out of position, out of the guard position. So it was really a lackluster um, fight on his part grappling-wise but and striking-wise. Um, some of the strikes that he was doing, he should have been fighting for um, underhooks, uh, moving his body a little bit better rather than just slapping at his head. He really just hasn't developed his game enough, but he could take it. I think Holland still has potential. He just needs to really learn, like all of us. Um, let's see if that happens. I think he's already had success uh, doing what he does. So let's see if, if he can develop as a fighter. And we've seen Vittori develop a little bit. I think he showed a lot of composure where I usually call him uh, of the big little baby as he complains and whines and really uh, is a, was sort of more of a bully style brawler, but he looked very, very good in this bout and he's definitely in path and ready for a rematch and, I, and, and he's in contention for it. I think they should give it to him. Let's see what happens. The UFC does all sorts of things, so there's no guarantees here on the UN, UFC. So let's recap what happened with me. I had another losing evening. 72% of my total bets were losers with 28% being winners. I'm not going to give you exact totals. Uh, because it really doesn't matter. Of the winners, 50% uh, of mine were parlays, 13% uh, were props, and 38% of the uh, winners were uh, straight bets. Of the, the total unit investment, this is a very, very, very funny thing of everything. Uh, let's just say I put five units in. Um, on the winning side, I had 1.5 units. On the losing side, I had uh, 3.25 units. 51% of my... Uh, investment were losers 49 percent were winners or or, or, or what through uh, or, or representing that 1.5 investment basically i had a 81 percent losing differential and i broke even yes that that it was that bad and why does that happen is because those four parlays that i won uh the straight bets and the prop bet that i won um uh, were larger betting units than all the entire or a good portion of the entire other losing bets that I made. So I scaled up once I was even or uh, down a little bit, but throughout the evening I tend to scale up on my bets. But what did I learn? I still what did I still need to do here? My goodness, man! I got a someone's got a parlay problem. I got to break down and do less than half of my parlays. I got to eliminate most of my prop betting. And then I have to reduce the total number of my bets by 50%. Again, I do this for entertainment, but I have to be realistic of what my earnings potential are compared to what I have been losing. It's not saying that I'm going to uh, quit right now. It's just that I'm definitely going to reduce um, my betting capital and my exposure. So it, that's what's fun about doing this analysis. And hopefully I'm not insane and then uh, not take my own advice but I think I will. I've done it before where I've, I've curtailed a little bit here and there and seen how it's gone and then I've gone back. Uh, but it, it, part of it is environment. I do this for entertainment. I have a lot of fun doing it. I hope you guys are enjoying um, the betting, the wagering, watching the fights. And hopefully it's not tainting or doing anything bad on in the enjoyment of MMA or making your content. And I, 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 again, I want to go back to this. I really... Uh, enjoy this because I think there is a strong benefit to it and if there it wasn't a benefit I, I wouldn't do it. it it does take a lot of time there's a lot of effort I give a lot of props to a lot of the content MMA content creators out there lock of the night the guys that used to be at odds that are now uh, somewhere else uh, you know even some of the major uh, uh, players in the game like Ira Hawani I'm thoroughly entertained by the MMA holes everybody knows how much I love the MMA holes um, MMA on point is fantastic so many good people and then there are people that are under over overlooked and uh, underrated uh, like Chris Cross uh, from the MMA community you go out there and check out these channels like and subscribe leave a comment please like and subscribe to my channel leave a comment I'd be happy to reply hopefully I'll be very nice hopefully it won't be on a losing week again Play responsibly. 
you need information on gambling, there is a 1-800 number below. Have a great week. I'm going to hopefully get some time to make a pick video for our next event. So look forward, like, and subscribe. Thank you.